<laughs> my name's Nate Reich. Uh, I'm a paralympic athlete for Team Canada. Uh, the most recent uh, games, uh, I won gold in Tokyo in the 1500 meters. And uh, <laughs> he's humble uh, about his accomplishments. But don't let it fool you. He is a dog. My dog, I mean, his mentality is on a different level. Perfect, perfect. Welcome back, Reality Check! Boom, 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 boom! <laughs> you know what it is? It's BT over here. Zane Dre's over here. And we got our special guest, Nate Dunn. I'm ready for it. At least I hope I am. Uh, we got Nate <laughs> Reach. This is, this is uh, one of my great friends and uh, roommates for this trip. We're currently in Arizona right now in Flagstaff, up in the mountains for altitude training um on the tail end of it but yeah one nate just to take it away man introduce yourself let, let us know who you are yes, sir <laughs> yes sir my name's nate reach uh, i'm a paralympic athlete for team canada mm. uh, the most recent uh games uh, i won gold in tokyo in the 1500 meters and uh <laughs> <laughs> yes sir you know I think it's just from putting up with Bond, but you know, hey, you yeah. gotta do, you gotta do. You gotta build some callus somewhere, right? And yeah, and, uh, get ready to go to Paris here in uh, a couple years' time and try and uh, try and uh, repeat. So that's why Ron and I are up here and uh, putting in the work. Love it, love Man, it. That's so crazy. Don't 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 forget, he's a he's a world record holder at that as well. Um, in his in his events respectively. So cool it, yeah. yeah. Hey. <laughs> hey. And I just want to say. That, that both for Nate and for the viewers right now, um, Nate Nate is quite familiar with uh, Irvon is quite familiar with Nate. I am not so much. So the viewers, like I am the viewers, basically, like you and I are the same. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> Nate, you can treat me as how the viewers are going to receive. You know what I mean? So I'm going to be asking crazy questions. You know what I mean? I I I I don't know nothing. <laughs> All right. that's, that's yes, 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 yes. That's best to preface that because yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So today, um, it's it's really special. Nate, Nate has been uh, able to accomplish quite a bit, as you can see, to be able to do what he does, um, train beside yes. him, um, be roommates with him, like what it takes, even off the track, recovery wise. Um, what he's doing is a, is an impact, and so. Oh no! Well, we'd like to slide, you know, throw that word around. Um, and Nate, Nate does a great job with that. He also works with uh, youth uh, every now and then. Uh, what's that platform? Uh, uh, Children's Miracle Network. Children's Miracle Network, where um, uh, I've been direct with children, and they get to ask him questions about his career, his personality, um, and he inspires. And so, uh, on and off the track, he's his mentality is always uh, um, twofold, and in, in really just going after one his dreams and also while on the journey of doing so he's in, he's giving back so um that is nate and from my perspective um his last name is gray wolf so we always go ow when he's on the track you know he's got that he's got that dog in him so um i just want you got that dog in him yes sir nate <laughs> just uh speak to uh your story um you know how you got your injury like you know why are you a parent athlete and kind of like the road to how you got here as a Paralympian, uh, as well as a world record holder, as well as that, 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 that. Yeah, no, that's uh, it's definitely a pack that question. I it think it all, it all really starts with, you know, how I, how I grew up. I uh, was born in Fresno, California, and I was born right in the middle of uh, 12 professional athletes. So both of my parents were uh, international track and field athletes, and I was born when they both were in college. And so pretty much I didn't really know any different. Uh, we always joke around that I didn't know it wasn't normal to do wind sprints at 7 a.m. with your family to say he was the fastest in the fam till I was in junior high. So, you know, that was just uh, my life. And um, as Vaughn referred to my story, um, when I was 10 years old, I was playing golf. We were, you know, driving our parents crazy as, you know, <laughs> us, us young people like to do. Yes. Uh, and I mean. So they said, why don't you guys go out and, go out and p play golf? I had a, I had a baseball tournament the, the, the following day. So, um, you know, as when freak things happen, you know, the first five or six holes, 
going super smooth, you know, I'm just not trying to throw any F bombs out there while, while, while <laughs> like forests are shaking into the trees. Um, but on the seventh hole, an older group of gentlemen asked to play through and uh, we were 10 years old. So of course we hit our balls first and they're like, they're trying to take care of us. So they said, why don't you stand under the tree about 150 yards left of the fairway. And I was in the middle of my two friends were on, on the outside of me. And I remember looking back because I noticed he had this SQ Nike driver and when he hit it, it sounded like a tin trash can. So it was just that kind of that unique noise uh, that only that driver made. And then all of a sudden I looked down and then I had this tingly sensation uh, go through my body and the ball had that really weird bounce. And my friends said, Nate, you just got hit in the head by a golf ball. And I was like, holy crap. Um, you know, my right arm jolted down right away. Um, you know, being 10, you don't know really any word paralysis or anything uh like that so I, I grabbed my phone called my mom uh vaughn knows my mom um and she's like nate i can't believe that you're faking it like i can't believe that like you're gonna uh you know end the round early i was complaining about a sore arm from the night before when i pitched my best baseball game i'd ever pitched um but reluctantly she came and picked me up um you know didn't call nine nine one one or anything but she wanted to drop my friends off first because you know they're also 10. So that's a very scary environment to be in in that in that hospital setting and and so she drove me to the hospital but as we got closer and closer to the hospital i could uh feel her panic growing and starting to build and uh you know when she when we finally got to the hospital she's like neat jump out and run into the emergency room but i couldn't i was dragging my right leg i had been, become fully paralyzed on the right side of my body um and so she had to literally grab me and pull me into the the emergency room um and then my whole whole crap moment was i got back to my own room finally and i started to have a seizure and i was shaking uncont uncontrollably and that was the first time i'd seen any e emotion or negative emotion i don't mean mom she sprinted out of the hospital uh room to, to go and grab a doctor and right then and there i kind of knew like <sighs> something's not not right and you know the prog prognosis wasn't good uh, you know, they said, Nate, you never walk without a lip. Competitive sports are not in your future and you will not graduate high school. So really kind of, damn, John of like, don't, don't even try. And, uh, you know, uh, Vaughn definitely knows me as a pretty fiery person. I think sometimes, yeah. you know, when you yeah. meet me, I'm a pretty chill guy, but, um, I definitely have a switch <laughs> that I turn and, uh, can definitely become very, very, uh, fiery for sure. And, you know, uh, you know, in, in my crazy mind, I was like, well, if you say I can't walk, why don't I become a, a professional track and field athlete? So that was really my, like, <laughs> uh, fingertip, <laughs> middle finger, uh, back at him. <laughs> Being like, Hey man, let's, let's, yeah. let's, let's do this thing. You know, I think, I think for me it was, uh, it's okay if I fail. But if I don't try and I get that failure, then that's really not okay. Um, you know, I'm the oldest of five. And so I, anything that I do, I always think of what, what will my little brothers and sisters think of that? Um, and so that was something that was really big for me. And, you know, uh, I think my mom really laid the foundation for me. She's, I got out of the hospital on a Sunday, went to school on Monday. My mom said, I don't care if you, you, you have a headache, not come home. Uh, you know, you need to figure this out. We're not going to be easy on you. We're going to support you a hundred percent. But, you know, this is no, uh, you know, this is no freeway here. We're, uh, you're, we're going to make you earn everything that you have. And, uh, you know, looking back now, I'm so thankful for that. Um, you know, that really led me to wow. the second fastest in the state of Georgia in, in, uh, cross country. He did the D1 scholarship uh, to go run at Furman in South Alabama, and then eventually getting wow. classified for the Paralympics, having three world records, winning a world title, a Pan Am title, and a Paralympic title. And you know, for me, yeah, you can say I have a have a lot, have a lot of a lot of success, but you know, I don't really display any of that stuff. Uh, for me, it's always about the about the next thing, but. Uh, I think as you get older, you do want to enjoy those moments. So I think now I uh, really trying to figure out how to split those, how to, you know, be ambitious mm -hmm. and chase that next goal, but also enjoy that, um, you know, with my friends and family. Wow. Listen, bro, Vaughn, 
Bro. <laughs> Listen. Who is this guy, bro? Chills. Chills, bro. Chills. Chills. If anybody wakes wow, up, wow, 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 wow. he's like, oh, I'm tired, not feeling it, and you can do something, and you know that's a goal of yours, isn't that what he just said? It's not the fact that he Ooh. failed or not. It's the fact that he wanted to try, and that failure he'd be okay with. Bro, and watch this. Bro, I, I can't remember if it was you who sent this video or somebody else, but I remember uh, in one of our group chats, somebody sent a video of, uh, I think it was Kevin Hart saying, uh, everyone's fi afraid to fail, but by the way, not trying is failing. And we're like, yo, and he just confirmed, that's exactly, that's exactly it. That's exactly that's it. That's crazy you that's, brought up Kevin Hart, because Nate and I joke about Kevin Hart. Nate and I joke about Kevin Hart, like spit skits back to each other. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh my god, Miss Green. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Crazy. That's hilarious. No, nah, man, I, I, Mad. it's crazy because some pieces of that story, and I asked Nate to share the story as if, you know, it's brand new audience. Um, obviously you might not know most of our audience and, and my other audience might not know Nate. And so I just like asked him to explain it the way that like, obviously brand new audience and some of that I've never heard. And I literally got chills listening to, um, but I know his, his mom and just how, how she is. And she is that type of person and have a parent to be like, she sets such a hard standard that you cannot dip below. Like, and that's, that's, that's it. And, and, um, your mom has had some success in track and field. So has your dad. And it's just like that, that background of the mentality wow. going into something like this, which is like the turning point in your life. Um, can you just like speak more about your mom and what, she, like what she kind of laid the foundation, like what kind of uh, groundwork did she lay for you in you know, specifically? Yeah, definitely. I think one of our big messages is there was this teacher that Kobe Bryant had and he had this quote that said, don't rest in the middle, rest at the end. And so for her, it's like uh, when the work is not done, there's no, there's no resting. Absolutely not. And she made it very clear to me like, Nate, listen, you have disadvantages, but that's not the way we're going to look at it. We're going to look at it as opportunities. So Nate, yes, you have to re do more recovery than that normal able-bodied athlete but guess what that's a win you get to wake up early you get to do all these little things and when you step on that line you know you've done more than anyone else and then that goes same to the classroom my mom's like yes you get some extended time but that doesn't mean you can get c's i expect d's and a's and if you get a c track's gone and so for me she was like it doesn't matter how long it takes you um you need to rise to that level kind of like vaughn vaughn was talking about yeah. and we're not allowed to dip yeah. and, uh, the thing that i love about her is that she let me know those expectations mm. and she's not a sports psychologist but she almost is like she'll ask me mm. you know, three or four different questions and it's almost like i'm taking the survey so that she knows how hard that she can push me and she knew that i wanted to be paralympic or Olympic champion one day. And so she would mess with me all the time at practice. She would be like, all right, Nate, run up to a time trial on Tuesday. Monday would would come around and go to practice. All right, Nate, in an hour, you have a time trial, do whatever you need to do. Um, but I'm like, we're supposed to do it on Tuesday. She goes, did you not hear me? I'm doing it. We're doing it today. Or I would be warming up and she would like try and like move my shoes somewhere so that I would freak out before the race so that I would learn how to deal with chaos. Or she would talk to me or ask me the same question like 10 times in, in the car before a race. And, you know, before a performance or before a race, you're so nervous and, you know, you can get frustrated really, really easily. And so she would push those buttons and really teach me, um, you know, how to do that. And for me, it's so funny how it comes full circle at Pan Am Games. They moved my race up by two hours, four hours be before my race. So we had to rush and get to the track and I barely got to warm up and I had to step on the line. And then, in, wow. and then in Tokyo, my leg stopped working, my uh, bad side. And all of a sudden I was like, oh my gosh, this is the biggest rest of my career. I just trained five years for this sole event. And all of a sudden my nervous system is like shut down. Um, and so, you know, we learned how to stay calm, how to wake it up as much as we can. Um, and so I think for me, she just really taught me how to be comfortable in my own skin. And uh, that's probably the thing that I'm most thankful for her to this day. Yo, so wow. we spoke about something similar to this with parents um, on a previous podcast and how parents' jobs are to ensure that their children 
not only survive, but like they are there to give them the hardest case or worst case scenario so that they can survive and thrive in any given situation. It's not about being friends with your kids or, oh, let's, you know, let's, that, that's good. Yes. But that is a ex perfect example of I'm going to make you the best that you can be in any given situation. And for me, in my opinion, that's, that's the definition of a, a great parent. Um, and, and, and the thing that I'll add to that is I think the caveat to what you just said that to me, I took from what you just said in, in, in when he was explaining about how his, his mom is, is how he said, the first thing she did was ask questions to see what he truly wanted. So it was like, she understood, okay, this is the goal. And then based on that understanding, it's like, okay, some days he's not going to want to get up. So now my role is to make him get up. You know what I mean? Like, it's like that understanding of like, okay, now my role is to push you to where I know you really want to be. So like in those little areas where you might not be reaching, I'm going to make you reach there. You know what I mean? That's, cr that's crazy, bro. That's great. I didn't know that all the little things and, um, with para, uh, uh, Pan Am and, and, uh, at the, at the Olympic game or power the games that all those things went wrong before, because mind you, he went to these events and smashed them. <laughs> so like, <laughs> I, I didn't know all that took place. And it's interesting that it did, it did come full circle. Um, do you remember in those moments, your mom teaching you those skills? Yeah, definitely. I, I, uh, you know, I always think that I can handle anything like that might not be the truth, but in that moment, that is my truth. Like I can either, uh, go through more pain than anyone else or I can handle anything. And so, uh, for me, yeah. um, you know, it's framing it in a way that's chewable and that you can digest and then, and then attacking it. Like, or, like my injury is not a poor me. It, it's, it happened. Crap happens. That's my life. That's my new circumstances. If I whine about it for three or four years, then what good is that going to do? I'm not going to be accomplishing any of my goals and, um, and I want to accomplish my goals. I mean, uh, at, at, at the end of the day, I have a lot more things I want to accomplish in my career professionally on the track and off the track. Mm -hmm. Um, and so um, that's just kind of the way that I try and frame things. That's blessed. Wow. That's blessed. And you know what I'm getting from a lot of the things that you even said, uh, in the beginning is I wrote it down here because I, I also had this thought, but then he was kind of beating that thought and, 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 and what it is, is this thought of the, I, I think that for me, people are different, but I think for me, the, the most inspiration that I get or like the, 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 the strongest lessons that I learned from people are when it's from the character of the person I'm watching or from how they act and behave rather than what they tell me. So it's like, you can be a wise person, but if the way that you're trying to communicate your wisdom is we have to sit down and you're going to like words, you know, like we're going to conversate, um, that's, that's good. But I feel like in this situation, um, and it, 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 I think it bleeds over into like your mom and, and, and your parents and stuff and how you grew up. Um, but like seeing that inspiration and seeing that like, oh, in this family, we don't give up or like in this, you know, you know what I mean? Like, this is not a poor me situation. Like we're going to rise to the occasion or things like that. It's like more about like the character and how you guys act. You know what I mean? Which is to me, that's like so inspirational. Like that's like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Well, this, that's so true. I, I actually just hearing you talk, I was thinking to myself, like, um, what's your mom with like Max and your brothers and sisters? Is she the same way with them? Or is she a little bit harder and you just like, what is that like? Yeah, I think, I think she parents each of us completely different. Um, I would say she probably parents in me and Avery, uh, who's the youngest one on my mom's side. Um, us the same kind of, she's definitely a bit more hard on us. And then I think my stepdad, who I consider my dad, um, kind of parents, the two middle boys a bit, a bit harder than my mom does. And so, um, you know, they're a really good kid and, um, you know, it's, and my, my motivation always has come from my, from my siblings to, uh, hopefully pave a path that they're proud of. Um, and so, um, you know, those are those things when, you know, we talk about when you're tired or, um, or whoever's tired or you don't want to do the work, but it's the things that I think of when I feel that way. Um, like if I told Max, I didn't want to go out and train, she would look at me like, what's wrong with you? Um, and so, <laughs> and so uh, yeah, we definitely motivate and inspire each other. Yeah. Uh, which is uh, yeah. really cool how, 
exposed before myself. That's cool. And and um, on the on the topic of like parenting and like how your how your parents would like make you guys rise to the occasion and, and stuff like that and push you to to do what you your goals are. Like it sounds right now that you kind of have like a hindsight um, hindsight mindset of like you have hindsight appreciation of like things that they were doing but clearly like when you're 15 you know what i mean like them pushing your buttons is gonna be annoying so like my question is like what was when was when did you realize that like oh she like this is actually good like like i actually appreciate what they were doing and i definitely didn't i mean i got kicked out of practice i don't i don't like yeah you got like this multiple times by my mom um i would say when i moved to victoria because I had like this separation mm-hmm. uh, where it was like, mm-hmm. my mom's not my coach anymore. She's not, I mean, she's still still my mentor, but in a different way, she's more of a full-time mom. And so when I moved up to Victoria in 2018, uh, that's when I met Vaughn. And um, yeah, I just, I, I started work, working with the sports psych and kind of going through things and finding people who I really look up to and what are those characteristics of, um, those people who I look up to and um, I think that's really when the appreciation set in uh, fully mm-hmm. um, I've had appreciation for her and um, you know and my stepdad played such a huge role too um, you know he played this completely other role he's the one that I lifted with at 5 a.m at uh, three times a week and um, she could because uh, he's the father figure uh, in my life he's the one that could really push different buttons um, and have harder conversations uh, that were sometimes there's certain topics I wouldn't listen to my mom on and he and I listened to him on those certain, those certain topics so um, they played a really really good role and uh, you know my stepdad doesn't get a lot of credit um, and so whenever we talk about parents I always want to bring him up because uh, he definitely deserves to share that nice that's West <laughs> that's West I um so those sessions with your with your stepdad Ben yeah yeah um and those sessions in the morning um where there was like comparatively breaths of like fresh air air with him like building that relationship connection and that that drive in terms of like coaching styles not even parenting but just coaching styles like how did you find his coaching style like 5 5 30 in the morning versus like training with your when she was your coach Mm -hmm. yeah my mom's definitely more intense um but i feel like you just don't mess around with my stepdad like you just with with that you just like you just it's just kind of known that you know i mean he's six six four uh former professional baseball player um so it's like <laughs> yeah you don't you don't kind of mess with him but i think i've always in high school i started growing this uh, i would say unique appreciation for him because um you know he stopped playing professional baseball because he had um other things in his life that were important and i was one of those things and he was 25 26 when he did that and so as i got closer to be 25 or 26 um i started to imagine like me getting married me my wife having you know if they had if she had a kid prior to me like like how would i step up and you know i don't know if i would have done what 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 he did for me and um you know there's no uh knee on the track without ben there's no world records. There's no Paralympic record. There's no Paralympic title without him. Um, and so I think uh, I had, we had like this weird, like unique understanding of each other. And um, and he recently went through cancer and we connected on both of our, uh, I don't want to call it trauma, but just ex- experiences through adversity. And that even made us even closer. Um, and so it's just funny the twists and turns that life takes and the ways that it pushes you and also brings you closer. Literally, just, bro, I, I think you were genuinely blessed with the parents that you were given. Oh, dude. Like immensely that. Yeah. Just thinking about right now, I'm 22, but I turned 23 and I, and yeah, just putting, putting myself in that, in the sheet that Ben, um, just, I'm not sure if, if he did it, you know, for, uh, easily. Mm-hmm. but that's huge like that's a prime age to be like i'm in baseball you can be in baseball for a while yeah. right and so um shout out to the dream team of your parents because they've obviously done a, a fantastic job in creating um a person uh that that can handle and also demolish adversity and anything in his path and so 
in your past. So I, I shout out to them. And that's, that's huge. Um, to be, able I, to, I have, yeah, that's incredible. Oh yeah, continue, continue, continue. Yeah, no, just that yin and yang of what they were able to do and bring to the table. Um, not just for you, but for like your brothers and sisters, um, as well as not, like, I know you as more of like an, the athletes, the giving back, the, you know, the banter, the, you know, that, that fiery side. Or never been. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's, it's, it's really nice and refreshing to hear like this, like where it's, where it's coming from, where it all started. Yeah, what you were going to say, Sam? Man, yeah, I, I just, I was thinking about all this and it brought to my attention that like, it, it just brought a question to my mind and it's a very broad question. So this can really go into any direction, but uh, based on what he was talking about and based on what I know about you as well, Juan, we kind of all um, have gone through periods of time where we had to make very big decisions and and very borderline life altering decisions and that is a perfect example of your stepdad saying hey i'm 25 and i can choose to either keep playing or step down because of whatever it may be that he he deems more important i like that's that <laughs> you like you can say it like that's like a like a like just a surface level thing but dude to be 25 years of age yeah. playing professional baseball and saying not nah, things are more important he's a crazy decision bro yes like that's a crazy decision like like put respect on that right yes. there bro yeah because <laughs> a lot of people not making that choice bro yeah like a lot of people not making that decision. so my question is and it's not really necessarily a question but like it's an inquiry mm. how how do people um let's say our age around our age group in this generation deal with having to make that big of a decision because i mean that decision can send people into depression like that decision can make people go crazy because of all the things riding on those type of decisions they don't like i mean it would some people might take forever to even make the decision because they don't want to affect um they they, they don't want to have negative ramifications or whatever so it's like how do you even get in the mindset of saying First of all, I have to make the decision at a, a reasonable time. Like I can't just delay it forever. Yeah. And then how do you put yourself in like, get your head on your shoulders properly to be able to make an educated, like proper decision in terms of what would benefit you in life? No, that's, I mean, I think it's a, it's a very uh, tough question, but I think, I, I think for me, uh, one thing that I can see why he made the, the decision is because life is so much more worth going through it with someone else and so i know a big part of it was my mom probably the majority of the part of it was my mom and and you know i'm 28 and ron and i have had this conversation but um, with my girlfriend you know um, i've noticed my performances being better my life being better because i have someone to share it with and so i think for him during that time he found someone that um you know he wanted to share those moments with and um and it is a really tough decision because you know th things could go haywire things could not go great but i think you know all things good uh they start out with being a big risk um and so uh, i think you know sometimes you gotta you gotta make that big jump and um i'm definitely in hindsight super thankful that uh that he decided to uh make that jump because his his family is i mean my family so um, yeah, I'm super lucky, but um, I would definitely like to like, uh, I love seeing why people made certain decisions. And so I would love to, uh, it's maybe a conversation I need to have with him and just pick his brain a bit more and mm -hmm. see what were the circumstances and what were those varying reasons that he decided to make that, uh, decision at that time. Yeah. Like, I'm curious what, 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 what you would say on that topic about, about like, and just that idea of making big, big decisions. Yeah, I'm thinking yeah. because um, I think Nate brought up a great point in just to, in terms of um, when you have found a partner or found something that you know that it's changing you for the better and you recognize it and are aware of it at that moment in time is crazy. Um, and I have, you know, my girlfriend, she, I've realized this as well. We've had this discussion as well. It's just like the, the impact of another individual synergistically is wild uh in the place of attaining a goal that was there for as long as i can remember i've always wanted to go to the Olympics, always wanted to pursue sport and track and field 
And it's not, it's not, it's a, the person enhances that dream and doesn't take away from it. And I feel like that's like a, a, a special thing. And because of that, I can see maybe, maybe when you have this conversation with, with Ben, be like, I can maybe see him being like, okay, this is someone where I can grow with maybe more as a person than I will grow with in my sport. Mm -hmm. And like that, mm -hmm. that is something where I feel like I am right now I'm 22 and I don't know, I'm, I'm a little bit on the younger side in, in my sport and, and developing into the sport. But if I was in your position and I was 28 years old and I'd accomplished things that I wanted to accomplish, um, where I know you have ticked those boxes and then you're like, wait a minute, you're at the point where you're like, there is more, mm -hmm. right? And like at that moment, it's tough. I don't know what I would do because um, after sport, there's a whole bunch of life left, right? And it comes down to um, this moment is great. And as you said earlier, just like enjoying those moments and actually splitting your time between like, I just kicked the living life out of this uh, Oli uh, Paralympics and a uh, world record, da, 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 da. Like after all that's done and, and said and done, the legacy is there, but then who is going to carry it? that legacy on and I feel like mm -hmm. like an important piece that I'm realizing um with friends like Nate and other friends that I've spoken to are a little bit older than me wiser than I am um who have that life experience and I'm just like wait a minute like at a certain point the hustle and the grind is great that mentality that you've developed all this time is fantastic but at a certain point the principle transfers to another section of your life and it's just like who are you going to choose to build that next section of life with and I feel like that's important that's well, very important yeah and 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 off of what you said it kind of relates to um it's kind of a topic that we talked about in another podcast but it's kind of related to that whole concept of getting better as a person as a human rather than prioritizing getting better uh like socially um yeah. or it's, um increasing your status societally um and that's a I mean so if you if you gave that choice would you want to increase like get better as a person or 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 get better like socially if you ask that question to a lot of people in this generation i don't even know if they would pick you know what i mean like i don't know yeah um but, so that's that's like uh what are you saying no i, I was just gonna say like the, the 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 fact that our generation would struggle with that question is wild because a person who has grown enough knows that the growth eventually turns into social success so it like you know what I'm saying? It, it takes that initial level of growth to realize that. Though. No, and I think one thing that just came to my mind was, you know, in our generation, there's so many people who talk about like rich or richness. Mm -hmm. And for me, I think Ben's life was, it added so much richness to, to his life, having my siblings, mm -hmm. um, you know, being my dad, being a husband to my mom. And so I think uh, for him, he didn't really value like, that big dollar in that moment, he was like, mm, how am I going to make my life richer? How am I going to make that quality of life even better? And so I think he made that tough, that, that tough decision, but I think that's probably one thing that made him make that decision. That's a great mm -hmm. And I feel like that's, makes sense. Yeah. that's so, that's so crazy because that's, that's, I feel like that um, really, really encompasses why like making sure that you're around a sound environment is so important. Um, I mean, clearly you were blessed to just be in that uh, in, in environment, but like just ensuring that even even the things that are in your control and like your friends and who you spend the most time with, like making sure that those, those people, the things that they do and their character are things that you can look up to and things like you can learn lessons from the way that that person is acting. That's so important. That's so important because yeah. like clearly like, yeah, go ahead. Like, like clearly, clearly one of the reasons why you could answer that question so beautifully is because you literally saw that in your stepdad yeah. and like you literally saw that he didn't value this not because he told me that he doesn't value money is because you saw him spending time with other things that don't involve money so it's like you know what i mean yes absolutely and i i mean i remember when bond i won't say what what the conversation was about but i remember when bond had to make a tough situation or a tough decision about eight months ago and uh him and i were going through it and it's like dude what do you want yes there's people that you might let down on either side but at the end of the day you don't want any regret right like like if this is your 
goal. This is your dream. Like chase that man. Like, yeah. uh, like no one can, sure. They might be disappointed for an hour, but after that, no one can be mad at you for chasing that thing that you really want to do. And if they are, see ya. Yeah. Like, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And this, this brings up, uh, this is a great segue. It's what I was thinking, but just to that, I, um, I remember having that conversation with you and getting off the phone and just like, uh, I thought back to a conversation with my dad and, and what he would say is, uh, he gave me this lesson and the lesson is this, and I, I'll share with all of you, uh, which is what happens if the person or the people that you're doing this thing for dies. And I was like, Woo! nah, let's pause right there because <laughs> that is, we have to, we have to unpack that. <laughs> <laughs> and and that, that conversation stimulated that that conversation with my dad and I had a while back and I was just like it it you have to do you you have to do you and like no matter the repercussions you will have peace because that's you no matter what and that was a huge lesson um for me just going forward like thinking about you know eight months ago and just like having to make certain decisions and I was like you know what and I'm so so happy i listened to my heart so happy i listened to my heart because wow um in any other circumstance i might i might have been miserable right and so and i would have to live with that and so i i my next segment and and thanks for bringing that up because i was i was like what what did you have to become or create to defy the prognosis of the doctors to be like sitting here right now with us yeah your resume is a long thing but like what did you have to become or create um to do that and god knows this answer but um i created this oshi ego called gray wolf mentality and so i'm uh my great grandma is full blood uh flathead native american um and so uh, a lot of my family grew up on the on the on the reservation and uh for me um you know i'm i like think i'm chill nice sometimes <laughs> bond, 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 bond might disagree uh but when i jump on that track i am vicious i am vindictive i am not nice but that moment i cross that finish line i'm back to nate um and so that's so cold bro this not so not so nice person kind of like mama mentality obviously you probably uh can grasp on the theme that i really look up to kobe bryant um you know and uh, my uncle worked with him uh in his last two years of his career he's in his documentary um and so and and so for me um i always just for some reason really pulled him because no matter what he messed up plenty of times but he always take took full ownership of that and so that was one thing that i really wanted to take um you know if i wanted to be successful in truck and field and i to create this team around me that i had when i got hurt i had some of the best doctors some of the best nerve neurosurgeons the best parents the best family the best friends so for me i need to create that mentality but also that team that that surrounds me during that time because there's going to come tough moments when i'm pretty down or have a bad race and you know uh you know sometimes you don't need to say the nice thing sometimes they need to say what the truth is like wow that really sucked uh, and you did a b and c wrong um and so i think uh for me that's really what I dove into. And I honestly, I just love when people would speak the truth. Like, uh, when people would be like, oh. hey, like, yeah, this sucked. <laughs> like, it's, it's just the truth. Like, I know Heather sometimes, who is my coach, um, she's so sweet. And, um, you know, sometimes I tell her, I'm like, hey, it sucked. And it's okay that it sucked. Like, I'm not going to go down this mental spiral and, like, beat myself up about it. But, you know, that's it. Mm. Let's say why it sucked and let's move on. Wow. And what's what's crazy about one of the things that you said in there, it is is that concept of um, um, needing a team or making sure that your team is sound and the people that you're around um, are, 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 are helping you to achieve your goal. And not only that, but they they create an environment where everyone can grow, essentially. And that reminds me of, it's not really a quote, but it's this idea of, basically don't pray for success until you're in the position to deal with the success mm -hmm. um, and it's and and, and it, deal, it, it it can be related to you personally like if you mentally being able to deal with certain things um and 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 you personally being able to handle what that is that lifestyle is going to bring but also 
don't pray for success until you have a team behind you that can deal with the success. You know what I mean? Because there's a lot of people who think they have friends. Right. And if they if success was to hit them, you don't see what friends you have. You know what I mean? So that's so that's so important. That's so important. That is so true. And I I I always I'm big on that village that stands behind the one person that a lot of people see because a lot of people don't give the credit due to the people that got them there. Yes. And that's that's something I appreciate with Nate. Um and I, I appreciate him in the sense of just like the recovery pieces that he speaks about with you know his family and having the best available. Um I've seen firsthand that the recovery pieces is huge. Like this year for me personally, leaning into recovery, leaning into that space where you, no one sees it's off track is so huge it's so paramount and it, it comes from a team where are you recharging where are you going when you when you're not feeling like okay i'm not my a game right now where are you going to to refuel like where where are you putting yourself which environment is like your your quote unquote default right and i feel like that is a space where a lot of athletes and a lot of people overlook in the sense of not even just like sport but like if you're in any performance field right or if you just in life you're surrounded by people where you're happy you're you're happy for the one time with for the one day you're happy and because that group is normally negative you get dragged back down right and so i feel like that there is there needs to be more emphasis on the village behind you and i'm yeah i'm i'm really i'm really fortunate and blessed to to be in connection with nate but then also we've also had a syn synergistic relationship where um, our conversations are just so it can be the deepest thing it could be the goofiest thing it could be like we just finished a workout and we're like we don't want to talk at all <laughs> right <laughs> and we we get that like it, it's it's there um but like having that ability that understands you takes you for who you are and and say look this is the situation cool peace love you know what i'm saying like that that sort of relationship is unique, but is needed. Yeah, I can't. Yes, I can't. I can't agree more. And I think you know, with that village is there, and then you find those things that really motivate you that you need to pull from 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 time to time. And it's funny how those evolve over the years, right? Like maybe when you're young, it's just I just want to be the best, right? Or now it's my girlfriend inspires me. She's chasing X. My little bro, Max, inspires me. He's chasing X. You know, I'm running for those kids who didn't get to walk again. I'm, I'm really running for them. Or those people who have invisible disabilities like mental health, PTSD, TBIs, who walking down the street, you you would have no idea what they're going through, but they're probably going through hell. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's I'm running for those people as well. So I think it's, it's cool as you mature, your eyes open, you travel to different places in the world, and you just, you're, your eyes are open to so many different things. And I think that's the thing that I've really been leaning on over these last uh, two years, really dialing in and seeing who those people are that kind of like Vaughn said, that actually charge your battery instead of bring it down. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, th I think that's really important to find that. And as when, when we're young, we don't usually know that. And if you do, then you're definitely ahead of the curve. Definitely, definitely. I, I, oh, had, man. I had a question, uh, unless you wanted to say something on this top on this topic, but um, say. Huh? Did I, ask? I said I, I had a question, but unless you unless you have something about this topic before we before I ask it. No, no, ask, 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 ask. So I wanted to ask about um, because you're you're already touching on it. Um, what is that? What are those things for you off the track that keeps you going, keeps you motivated as one? And I think you, you already went into it a little bit. But like, just take a, a bit, a step further. Like, what is your vision of track? What is like, what are you trying to like, not even trying, we're doing it. What are you trying to scale? Cause you're already successful at what you do. What are you trying to scale off track? Yeah, no. So I think uh, for me, I just, well, I, I really love working with the youth. Um, I've always really enjoyed that. And, um, you know, like mm -hmm. for example, Vaughn, um, he worked with my, one of my uncle's practitioners uh in the human movement space and he's noticed a difference um and so for me you know i just want to help kids as much as i can in that space it's almost like 
you taking that parking brake off and you know or that governor off as as bomb likes to say and allow yourself to move freely and so that's something that i'm super interested in and also uh giving back to, to children's miracle network they're a uh, company that fundraises uh locally for all the children's hospitals in the u.s and in canada um, and and all that money that you fundraise stays local, so they have local fundraisers. Yeah. So that's uh, something that I really want to be involved in. And they just did a where where is he now? A little short doc on me uh, that'll be coming out here pretty soon. And um, and so yeah, those are the things that I really enjoy. And honestly, spending time with my family, uh, you know, the being away up in Victoria with Vaughn and Heather and a, a lot of our teammates. I really realized how important my family is to me. Um, I always knew they were important, but there seemed to be some extra layers pulled back on why they're so important to me. And then obviously mentioned my girlfriend, um, you know, in the past, I don't really talk about my relationship, but, but with Cherie, she's someone um, that I just, uh, I guess the best way to explain is that I would never let anyone be there before a race to talk to me or to say good luck to me. Um, I don't like anyone in that space and she's the only one that I really allow in that space. At national championship, she was hyperbolding me be, be, before the race would, would help me stretch out. She'd be the first person I want to see after the race. And so for me, kind of having that whole thing for me um, is really important off the track. And mm -hmm. um, so, um, and I, if you would have told me that three years ago, I would have laughed in your face. <laughs> oh, no, that's like it, like it uh, was yep. definitely nothing. Yep. Um, you know, Heather called me the lone wolf for so long, um, you know, and that's just kind of how I acted and d don't trust a lot of people. And, um, and so it's funny the way that uh, that's definitely changed. Yeah, love it, love it. Crazy, yes, crazy. Yeah, I remember, crazy. You, I remember you three years ago. <laughs> that was a completely different mate. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's amazing. And where where can where can we find that doc? That when it comes out, like, is it gonna be on your Instagram or is it gonna be on like what's your what's your output there? Yeah, so it should be on Jim's Milk and Network's YouTube channel, and I believe there'll be a partnership post between me and them. Uh, on Instagram, um, so you'll be able to see it there, and it'll have my mom <laughs> in there talking about it, which is which is pretty cool. She's a pretty unique perspective that uh, you know they always want to hear the patient's perspective, but I think there's such a different layer um, in my mom's perspective. And mm -hmm. I mean, you know, knowing that your son could possibly die, I'm sure there's uh, yeah. you know, your, I couldn't imagine where your mind goes. I mean, I couldn't imagine something happened to max benji avery or carly like i i don't know what my mind would be going crazy so i can't imagine if it's your own kid yeah, yeah uh, i'm really looking forward to watching that documentary just because yeah. just hearing about your mom and how she is and um the, kind of, the moment it, even in the moment where she's like all right jump out of the car and go in the hospital um <laughs> you know just kind of hearing those layers and pieces you know what she was thinking in the moment and uh, yeah, i'm excited to hear that uh, what's your handle oh, on Instagram so that people can see it? It's Nate Gray Wolf on everything. It's Nate. It's it's nice. it's Nate Gray Wolf. So if you're looking for re shits, just not going to be found. <laughs> so, uh, just go with the Nate. Put the Nate Gray Wolf for sure. Awesome, awesome man. And I just wanted to say at the end too that just the well, just just the idea that out of anyone that had the right to quit, mm -hmm. it would have been you. Yeah, and just the fact that you're just like, no, nah, I'm gonna laugh in the face and be about to do this and become a a, a medalist. Like, like we're talking about impact. Come on, bro. Yes, bro. Yes, come on, bro. Yes, bro. Kids seeing that, bro. Come on, bro. Massive, yeah, man. Massive. So just, I just wanted to give you the, your 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 flowers and props, man, because that's you that's great summer, man. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yes. Um, and something that you mentioned in the beginning before we end off um, was just that you're, you're you're shooting for more and you're you're going after um, a, a deeper a deeper layer really of what your achievements were. And I just want to, my question um, is essentially what are like what's your next steps like if for the next like you know years and a few years here in track and field, however long you continue, like what what do you want to do before you say okay, I. Right, out. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, I mean, the early part of my career was I was chasing Michael McKillop from Ireland. He was the person who dominated our classification. And now I'm in his role. Now I'm the person that everyone wants to be. 
Um, and uh, I'm excited to feel what that pressure feels like. Uh, I see <laughs> the uh, to actually feel what that really feels like, and also to have my family. They haven't, haven't been to any international competitions, so oh. to have them in Paris. Oh. Um, I have a big crew going over uh -huh. as my own, so I'm super pumped. Uh -huh. Highlighted by Cherie, my girlfriend, and 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 my mother. So I can't I can't imagine what kind of trouble they're going to get in Paris. Oh, can't be loud. Go ahead. Oh, you said, oh, I said rowdy. <laughs> yeah, brother. They're, they're going to be sipping wine and drinking. Uh, yeah, sipping wine and having a lot of food. That's for sure. Oh, my God. Awesome. Um, and then making as much noise in that able body scene as I possibly can. And then, um, you know, I, I want to make that Olympic trials final in the 1500, which that's uh, a goal that really uh, that makes me a bit nervous. But uh, I, I I really like those goals. And then, you know, it's, it's correlated to on the track, but just help there be uh, more of a uh, narrative around athletes with uh, invisible disabilities, uh, knowing that, you know, when they accomplish something that's no different than any other par par Paralympic athlete. And I hope that those sponsorships, you know, come with that, you know, as Ron and I have had this conversation probably a million times, but after Tokyo, I had no sponsors um, and I still really don't have any, but I have, I have a couple now, but you know, the big ones in running are those shoe, those shoe sponsorships. And, you know, I'm, really hoping to allow um, athletes in the future to uh, have those sponsorships and have those opportunities because I think uh, that, uh, you know, shoe companies maybe are just missing it a little bit. Uh, there's some impacts that us Paralympic athletes can have uh, that I think they just don't, either they underestimate and they just don't understand. And so hopefully uh, together we can help uh, just move that narrative along. So that's probably my biggest goal to be honest with you. Well, Solid, solid, yes, solid. Yes, and, and and just just so just I know he he he's harboring on the, the last point, but we can't we can't skip over the fact that he wants to be an able body compete in the able body section of Olympics. He was told he would never compete again, bro. <laughs> bro, he said he said he he said they said sports is out of the question. Out of the question. <laughs> bro, do you understand how cool <laughs> this situation is, bro? Yo, oh, yo, oh. this give me, this give me, bro, 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 this, 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 this is the same feeling that I get when I watch, um, uh, 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 Infinite, uh, no, Endgame, uh, yeah. Avengers Endgame, and then Cap, Cap is literally, it's him by himself, and he's staring at all, like, the, the aliens, and they have, like, he's literally outnumbered, and he's, like, he's prepared to fight anyways, bro. Yes. That's the same feeling I get, bro, from this yes. conversation, bro. <laughs> bro. Hard, <laughs> hard, bro. Great boat mentality oh, right tough. here. Top, locked and loaded. Top. Top. Yeah, man. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Appreciate you. Thank you for having me, guys. It was uh, it was a good time. I'm just, I mean, I didn't even give Vaughn that much banter, so I'm with that, I think I let him off. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> just wait till we turn this camera off. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's crazy. We might have to, we have, we might have to do a part two though. But like when we're all in person in that, yeah, yeah, man, man, that'd be blessed. That'd be blessed. Well, thank thank you guys yeah. for tuning in. Thank you, Nate. Um, yeah, super special human being, super special heart, super special mind. This guy's mind is fortified. Um, everything you've talked up to talked about up to this point, um, all our guests, and this is a personified example of what it is to build and actually cultivate the the personality, the the wherewithal that you actually want to create in yourself. You know, fortified mind having a clear vision and goal for what you want, actually making the the, the steps and actions to go after them, um, and then well, building on that, enhancing it, making it better, personal development, um, all of that. I've seen this man grow over the years, and um, I, yeah, he's very inspiring, not only to the people that he's, you know, you know, has his eyes on, has his hands in, but he's inspiring to his friends around him, including myself. And so, um, yeah, this is Nate Gray Wolf. Up in the building. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining a special pod, bro. Of course. Thanks uh, for having me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Reality check. The reality check army. Make sure, make sure y'all go in the comments and first of all, give this man his props and all that. And then go in the comments. 
uh, 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 tell us more, more, more conversations you want us to have. Hey, mention people that you want us to have on the pod too, yes. man, because yes. that'll be, that'll be fire. Make sure you like, and subscribe and all that too. You know what it is. <laughs> Reality check is the... Yes, sir. We out.